glad you came today. Hello to everyone. I'm glad you came today. We'll have some fun today. We'll have some fun today. Hello to everyone. We'll have some fun today. Hello, everybody. Today we're going to play Sturdy Birdie. We're going to play a different version of it. We're going to count to 10 and we're going to hold the poses. So it's a little bit different than how we play at school. So our first one is hands on belly. Woo! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! Right. Our second one is hands off to the side and opposite leg out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Our third one is arms out, one leg up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Next pose is arms on your head and one leg up. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <clears throat> oh, next one is standing up on your tippy toes and arms up. Ooh, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, these are difficult. All right, this one is patting your head, rubbing your belly, and one leg out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <clears throat> oh, the next one is one arm out, one finger on your nose, and one leg up. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, this one you're gonna put your arms out to the sides and then you're gonna kick one leg back. Ooh, can I do this one? One, two, three, ooh, four, five, six, seven, eight, ah, nine, ten. That was really difficult. Okay, this one is. One arm down, that leg up, and this arm flapping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we have three more. All right, hand on your nose, hand on your belly, and one leg up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, leg up and flapping arms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, the last one. Hands on your head and leg out to the side. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! Give yourself a clap. You did a great job. Good Animal Chickens by Victoria Marcos. My favorite animals are chickens. Would you like to learn about them? Chickens are a subspecies of red jungle fowl. They were domesticated thousands of years ago and have a long history with humans. More than 18,000 years ago, chickens were known as the bird that gives birth every day. There are more than 50 billion chickens in the world today. In the United Kingdom and Ireland, adult male chickens are called cocks. 
but in the United States, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, they are called roosters. Adult females are called hens. Male chickens under a year old are called cockerels. Female chickens under a year old are called pullets. You can usually tell a rooster from a hen by his long tail, the tall comb on his head, and the pointed feathers on his neck and back. These feathers are usually, usually bolder and brighter than the feathers of the females of the same breed. Chickens are omnivores. They will eat anything they find. You will see them scratching in the soil, looking for seeds and insects. They often eat insects and other animals. They may even eat small snakes, lizards, and baby mice. Chickens live in groups called flocks. A hen will usually lay about 12 eggs. She will sit on and protect her nest until the eggs hatch at about 21 days later. She will rarely leave her nest to eat, drink, or bathe. Before the chicks are born, the hen can hear the chicks peeping in their eggs. A chick uses its beak to peck a breathing hole in its egg. The chick keeps pecking until it comes out of the egg completely. Hens are very protective of their chicks and raise them with other hens. A rooster protects the flock by crowing. This is a very loud sound and it sends the message to other roosters that he is protecting his territory. Hens cluck loudly after they've laid an egg and when they are calling their chicks. Chickens can also make different warning calls when they sense danger. What's your favorite thing about chickens? Have you ever been curious about the eggs in your refrigerator? I wonder where they come from. I thought today we'd do a little exploration to learn more about those eggs. I'm going to head out into the yard and see if I can find any of these eggs back there. Here are the chickens inside of the run and you'll hear this loud noise that Cinnamon makes and that is her clucking to let me know she's laid an egg. Alright, well here's the hen house. And we come over here. This is the nesting box for the chickens. I left it up. Oh, there are the chickens. There's cinnamon on the left and chicken on the right. And I'm looking to see if anyone's laid the eggs. Hey, look at that, there's an egg in the nesting box. There's a nice blue egg. Here are my two full grown hens. Um, on the right is chicken, she's the lighter colored hen, and the darker one is cinnamon. Both of them lay eggs about every other day. And the eggs that they lay are blue. So it's kind of exciting to have a different colored egg because typically when we buy eggs in the store, you can get brown or white eggs. So this is a little bit of a different color. Right now they're eating dried mealworms. It is their favorite treat, as you can see. Now these chickens are a couple of years old and they are full grown hens. So they're about six to seven pounds. But when chickens are born, they are definitely not this big. So we're gonna check out some baby chicks now. We wanted to add new chickens to our flock. So we ordered some baby chicks from a farm and they shipped them in this box. It's like a smoothie bowl. Oh, oh my gosh, hi! Hello, babies! Why are there four? 
No, they're definitely all nestled together. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six? Hi. Why thought we were supposed to get three? Hi. No, we have, we, but we got them all together. Oh, the goods are coming to get theirs. Listen to that loud chirping. That means that they are not very happy right now because they're being picked up and put into their new home. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I got them all. Now these are what the chicks look like when they're a day old, but when they are born, they are not so fuzzy and fluffy. You see their feathers are all wet and it takes time for them to dry out. So these are newborn chicks that we hatched a couple of years ago. Here are the chicks in their home now and you see they've settled down and they are not making as much noise as they were making when we first took them out of their box. So they're pretty content right now and that's how you know that chickens are happy when they're moving around and they're not all huddled under their light for warmth. You can also see that the chickens are very curious. Here he is checking out the motion cam in their house. Um, so this is the way to know that they're really very happy. So I was getting ready to bake this morning and I took my eggs out of the refrigerator and I noticed something odd about them. So I wanted to talk a little bit about my eggs. We have two chickens that lay eggs. So hens lay eggs, roosters are the males, hens are the females, and we have two hens. They lay eggs and they lay these really cool eggs. One lays a blue egg and the other lays an olive shaded egg. So these are the eggs that I pull out of my coop every morning. Um, I don't, these aren't colored. Now typically when you buy eggs from the store that chickens have laid, you're going to get them in white like this one here or a brown egg. So they don't sell these in the grocery store, although these might, they might sell them at a farmer's market. So this is the typical egg that you guys see. So this is the egg that my chickens lay. And then I got this egg. And if you see how big this egg is, it's a lot bigger. Now, this is the typical size of a duck egg, but this came from my chicken. So I'm curious to see why this egg is so big. So we're gonna crack these two eggs open. This is just a normal sized egg that I typically get, like the eggs that you guys get from the market. And then this one is humongous. So let's see why this egg is so big. I'm gonna put that egg down. I'm gonna pull a bowl here and I'm gonna crack this egg on the side and I'm gonna open it up. And there we go. There's one egg, I got a little bit of shell in there, but that's okay, fish that out. I bake with it. So the yellow in the center is the egg yolk and then around the edge is the egg white. So when I cook this up that will turn white and that will be yellow just like a fried egg. So that's a typical egg. So now let's crack this big egg. I wonder how it's going to be different inside. So I've cracked it open, I'm going to open it up, <gasps> and look at that. There's one yolk, and there's two yolks. So that's called a double yoker. And you see that there are two yolks in this one egg. Now this typically happens with my chicken about once a month. Some chickens never lay double yokers. Mine just misfires every once in a while and we get this double yoked egg. Now, I have this white egg, which would typically come out looking like this, but we did something with this white egg. And instead of frying it in a pan, like I'm gonna do with this egg over here, we 
hard boiled it, which means that we cooked it inside of its shell. So this egg is raw and you cannot eat it like that. So I'll have to cook it in a baked good or like I said, fried up in a pan. But this one is ready to eat. And let's just see, I'm gonna wash this off for a second. surface to cut this egg open. I'm going to get a knife and I'm going to cut it lengthwise. And look at that. So there you see the yolk and the egg white, just like here. Today's activity is bouncing bean math. So for this project, you will need an empty egg carton, a permanent marker, small objects such as noodles, beans, or beads that can bounce through the compartments of the egg carton. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to open up your egg carton, and you are going to check to make sure that whatever small objects you've chosen will be able to bounce between the compartments. So I tried some objects like buttons and they were too big and they wouldn't move between the compartments. So you see they started in one compartment and ended in two separate compartments. So these little small objects definitely work. Next you're going to take a marker and you are going to number the compartments. So if you're working on numbers one through five, you could number them one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, so, so on and so forth. Or um, if you are working, you could do one through 12. I did it zero through 10 in my compartment. So I did have um, the repeats of two zero compartments. Once you're done numbering the compartments, you're ready to play. So you're gonna add your small objects in there. I've added two, I'm gonna shake it up. And as you can see, I landed on 10 and zero. So I might add 10 objects plus zero objects. I might also subtract. You can also use one small object and do number recognition or count out the number of objects that that numeral corresponds to. So lots of different ways to play this really fun math game. Chicken Little, a cautionary tale, retold by George Bridge and illustrated by B. Moritz. One day a few years ago, Chicken Little caused quite a panic. This is what happened. Chicken Little was leaving for school on a sunny, happy morning when an acorn fell from a tree and landed on his head. Panic! Chicken Little got scared. The sky is falling, he thought. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Chicken Little screamed as he ran. Penny Penny was walking to school when she heard the news. Panic! She was really scared, so she ran with her friend. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Chicken Little and Henny Penny screamed as they ran. Turkey Lurkey was waiting for the school bus when he heard the news. Panic! He was really scared. So he ran with his friends. The sky is falling, the sky is falling. Chicken Little and Henny Penny and Turkey Lurkey screamed as they ran. Dizzy Ducky was skateboarding to school when she heard the news. Panic, 
she was really scared, so she ran with her friends. The sky is falling, the sky is falling. Chicken Little and Henny Penny and Turkey Lurkey and Dizzy Ducky screamed as they ran. Foxy Loxy was sitting outside his cave, feeling hungry when he heard the news. <gasps> Opportunity. He wasn't scared, but he was hungry. Run in here, run in here, he screamed. And this is just what the friends did. Now I've got you, feed me, shouted Foxy Loxy as he slammed the door. Stuck inside the cave, the friends began to think. Then they began to talk. Then they began to figure out what had started the panic. Then they felt silly. We need to get out of here, said Chicken Little. Now, instead of being scared, Chicken Little felt brave. All of his friends followed Chicken Little as he snuck out of the cave and into the sunshine. Then they ran off to school. Life is good. Chicken Little and Henny Penny and Turkey Lurkey and Dizzy Ducky screamed as they ran. And from that day forward, Chicken Little and Henny Penny and Turkey Lurkey and Dizzy Ducky did not get scared so easily. They did not panic. They knew that being brave and staying cool was way more fun. The end. It is time to say goodbye to all my friends. It is time to say goodbye to all my friends. It is time to say goodbye. Give a smile and wink your eye. Yes, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Yeehaw!